Today I'm going to show you the very best online dictionary to use to study English and teach you how to pronounce any word in American English. English isn't phonetic. That means the letters don't correspond directly to sounds. I made a video where I went through all the pronunciations of O-U-G-H. It's surprising how many there are and how different from each other they are. What's not surprising is that I often get emails from students asking how to pronounce something, and I want to give you all the resources I can to figure out and learn how to pronounce any word in English like a native. First of all, when you use an online dictionary, you'll see that they try to help you with the pronunciation. Let's look up the word identify. Dictionary.com tells me that this is how I should pronounce it. Cambridge Dictionary has completely different symbols. Oh, and they have two pronunciations, one for British English and one for American English. That's good to know. I wonder which one was listed in dictionary.com. It didn't say one way or another. Merriam-Webster has yet another different set of sounds. Here's Macmillan. It looks similar to the Cambridge Dictionary. Both Macmillan and Cambridge use IPA symbols. That is the International Phonetic Alphabet to show the pronunciation, and this is what I recommend. It's more standard. I have a playlist to help you learn the symbols and sounds together. Click here or in the description below to see that playlist. There will be small differences. For example, Cambridge puts these little dots between syllables and Macmillan doesn't. I like Cambridge the best because it gives both British and American English pronunciations. However, it uses this symbol instead of the IPA symbol for eh, and it shows this symbol instead of the IPA symbol for the American R, so it isn't perfect. None of them are, but Cambridge is probably the best. Once you know the IPA, you can figure out the pronunciation of any word when you're using a dictionary that uses IPA, sort of. Let's dig deeper. Online dictionaries also have audio clips for each word. Let's listen to some. Identify. That sounds a little robotic, doesn't it? Identify. Identify. I wouldn't recommend using this as your example of how to practice. What about Cambridge? Identify. It's a little hard to tell what he's doing with his T here. I'm definitely not hearing a true T. Let's compare the British pronunciation. Identify. There, there's a clear true T. Identify. Identify. Hard to tell what he's doing here. It's almost like I barely hear the T at all. Identify. Identify. It's almost like a flap. Identify. Identify. Okay, there's our British pronunciation again. So it doesn't say that that's the British English pronunciation, but I know it is. But that would be confusing if you were a non-native speaker. You might not know if you were hearing British English or American English. Identify. Identify. Again, I'm not hearing a true T there. Identify. And I'm also not told if this is British English or American English. Identify. So they have the T written out in the pronunciation, but I don't really hear it. Identify. T, t, t. Do you hear that sound? Identify. What's going on there? The pronunciation didn't match the IPA symbols and it didn't match the other online dictionaries. This is when another source with lots of real Americans speaking full sentences is important because dictionaries don't take into account some of the changes that Americans make. We do a lot with the letter T. We have a stop T, a flap T, a true T, and a dropped T. But in the dictionary, they'll only ever just show one symbol, the symbol for the true T. A great next step is to go to youglish.com. It's a collection of YouTube videos with subtitles and you can search for a particular word or phrase and then filter by American English. Let's listen to the word identify. The second was to make sure that we had a way to communicate and identify all the employees. Identify, identify, no T there be able to identify that specific identify that specific everybody's tumor has a unique genetic profile and you want to be able to identify that specific piece identify identify no there was no T there you need to identify the moments and you need to identify identify again no T I identify as a woman of identify identify no true T the T is totally dropped 
The only trick is that you've got to identify the best. Identify, identify. So her beginning vowel a little different there, but again, there's no T sound at all. It's totally dropped. So we've listened to five examples so far, and none of them had a true T, even though when we looked them up in the dictionary, they all had written out in the sounds that there was a true T. Okay, so looking at the dictionary was a good first step if you know IPA, but it wasn't great for listening and repeating. Some of the audio sounded robotic, wasn't identified as American English or British English. Did you notice I just used the word identified and I dropped the T too, didn't I? It's important to go to a source like youglish.com where you can find examples of real Americans using the word you're studying in context. This helps you get a more natural pronunciation and you can also learn how to use the word by studying how native speakers use it in full sentences to express their ideas. One of the things that makes English so hard is figuring out how to pronounce something based on how it's written. I want you to know it's a challenge for us too. When I'm reading and I come across a word that's unfamiliar to me, I usually stop and look it up. So even Americans need to do this, need to look up the pronunciation. There's also the flip side. When we hear a word, figuring out how to write it down, how to spell it can be tricky. Native speakers of American English have a hard time with spelling too. I was playing charades with a group of friends once and we all had to write down something for someone to act out. So we all wrote something down on a piece of paper and put it in a bowl. My friend wrote down, Rachel scratching her eczema, because at that time I was having a lot of skin issues. And she wrote it like this, eczema. Eggs, like the eggs we eat from a chicken. That just made me laugh so hard, but it also made perfect sense, eczema. One pronunciation is the e eh as in bed vowel, g and z, just like the word eggs. So when you're learning a new word, it might indeed be hard to figure out the pronunciation. But even when you know the sounds and you hear a native speaker, it can be hard to do it yourself. I want to show you one other trick that you can have to work on this. Slow down the videos on Youglish. In the YouTube player, come here to settings and then click speed. And you can see you have lots of options. You want to choose normal or something slower. Here I've chosen 0.5 speeds. So that's half as fast as normal. Spot treat, the eczema, the rosacea, right? Eczema, eczema. So by hearing it slower, it helps me more easily identify what exactly she's doing with the sounds, and I can imitate it myself slowly. He had never had eczema before. Eczema, eczema. So now you have the resources and the know-how to teach yourself the pronunciation of any word. The thing I love about Youglish is if you're looking for something that's not in the dictionary, like a business name, for example, there's a good chance you'll find examples of native speakers saying it on Youglish. You can also use Youglish for a whole phrase, not just a single word. I hope these resources help you train your best pronunciation. Keep checking back with me for more tips on how to improve your American English pronunciation with new videos every week. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English. If you want to see my absolute latest video, click here. If you're new to the channel, check out this Where to Start playlist. Click here to subscribe. I make new videos on American English every Tuesday. To be sure we can keep in touch, click here to sign up for my newsletter. You'll get free lessons in your inbox every week.